Hi, this is Andrea Hendricks. The purpose of this video is to show you how to use the domain and period to evaluate sine and cosine functions. So let me just sum up some things that we've learned. First off, we know that the domain of the sine and cosine function can be all real numbers, and that's because we can move around the unit circle indefinitely in either the positive or negative direction. Now the range of the sine and cosine functions is negative one to one. In other words, the cosine of any value t can only be between negative one and one, as is also true for the sine. And that's because we're on the unit circle, right? And on the unit circle we have the domain and range on the unit circle is from negative one to one in the x direction, negative one to one in the y. So that's why we have values of sine and cosine between negative one and one. So if you get a sine or cosine value that's either larger than one or smaller than negative one, you know you've done something wrong. Now let me talk about another property that sine and cosine functions possess. And that is something called periodic. Um, these are periodic functions, which means that their output values repeat in a pattern. They're cyclic and we'll look at some real life applications that can be modeled by trig functions um, in some later sections. But they are cyclic functions, so what that means mathematically, we said that a function is periodic if there exists a positive real number c such that f of t plus c is equal to f of t. Well, you know that after one complete revolution of the circle, we're back to the same values of cosine and sine. And so the period of sine and cosine is 2 pi. So this leads to the following facts, that the sine of t plus 2 pi n is the same thing as the sine of t. So it doesn't matter how many multiples of 2 pi we add to the angle or to the real number, we get the sine of that original number. The same thing is true for cosine. Cosine of t plus 2 pi n is cosine t for any integer n and real number t. So here are some examples that we want to illustrate this with. We want to find the sine of phi pi. We want to use the period. So what we want to do here is rewrite phi pi as something plus a multiple of two pi. Well, hopefully you can see that sine of phi pi would be the same thing as the sine of pi plus four pi. So because four pi is a multiple of two pi, this is equivalent to just the sine of pi. So to find the sine of pi, remember on the unit circle, pi is our 180 degrees, right? And that point there is negative one, zero. So the sine of pi is zero. Now we want to find the cosine of eight pi over three. And you know, you can actually use the unit circle and just count the multiples that we've talked about. So don't panic if you think, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to do that, this is fine. So here I need to rewrite this eight pi over three as some sum where one of those numbers is a multiple of two pi. Well, you might wanna think about this. Eight pi over three is the same thing as two pi over three plus what? Six pi over three, right? Well, what is six pi over three? Yeah, six pi over three is just two pi, so this is the same thing as the cosine of two pi over three. Okay, so what is the cosine of two pi over three? If you need to look back at your unit circle, we can do that, right? The cosine of two pi over three is negative one half. Now it would definitely behoove you to have those values again memorized so that you don't have to keep referring to that. So if you have any questions on how to use the period, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks.